Good evening. <laughs> and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another show here live at Blast Pro Series, this time from Copenhagen. And we're going to be getting into something that you all would know that we were talking about if you did as I told you after Bahrain, which was to follow us on social media because they've been popping off. Those guys, they're down in the basement, they're slaving away, they're producing the spicy memes, and they're keeping you guys up to date with what's going on here at Blast. But now we're going to be getting into the Spring Series group draw. That's what it's all about. It's the new format that Blast, for, that Blast Pro Series are going with 2020. They've changed it all up. It's going to be groups. It's going to be best of threes. It's going to be best of ones. It's going to be all sorts of fun stuff. But you guys are going to be here live joining me and a couple other special guests to see what the groups are going to look like because that's what we're all waiting for. We want to see who's going to be playing against who. So just to get into the action now, before we get into it, rather, I'm going to bring El Jefe into the frame with me, the chief head honcho, <laughs> the supreme commander of Blast Pro Series. Welcome, Nicholas Estrov. Nicholas, welcome. Should I so bow in your presence? How does this work? Should, no. I, should I get on one knee? Is that uh, No? No, I asked for like small to medium <laughs> hefe, if anything. I feel like you overdid it. And then I guess... A little bit. I know, I know. And I mean, it's not uh, that often that I get to have my entire wardrobe outshined by one outfit. So thanks for that. Yes. And for the connoisseur out there of memes, that is, you'll recognize this outfit too. So... Let's get into it, Nicholas. What, do you, what is it that we're okay. getting into tonight? Well, so first off, it's obviously, uh, for us, a somewhat emotional end to the year. It's the conclusion of Blast Pro Series. Mm -hmm. It is the, the uh, launch of Blast Premier. So, so that is, is, of course, something we're excited about. Uh, and especially when it comes to this, it's a first. We've never, never done a group draw. We've never done a studio. Uh, a lot of new ones for us next year, but I think it's all based on learning, feedback from fans, feedback from talent, internal revisions has kind of formed what is Blast Premier. And I think easiest thing to do is maybe kick it off with a little video. Yeah, all right, so exactly. We have a little video. We're gonna take a look at that real quick. It's gonna actually highlight some of the details of what it is that we're actually gonna be talking about tonight. He was so ready for that. <laughs> So tell us, tell us, because I know there's some fanatics out there who are just raving about the format, the teams participating, certain teams not being here, certain teams being here. How does it all work out for us? I mean, first of all, maybe just to quickly touch on passion from fans, I think it's incredible. And I think that Counter-Strike would have been nowhere near what it is today had it not been for that. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate all the heat and the love that we're getting. I think that just excites us for what's to come in the end of 2020. But you know, there's gonna be plenty of ways to play into this tournament, not just to one leg of it, as we've seen in the past with ENDS. There's obviously a possibility of making it to the global final, winning that one million. So for the fans of the teams that are not in this group, they'll be, they'll be there's ways. There's still a chance. Yes, yes, yes. There's still a chance. There's a chance. Don't worry, all you fanatic fanboys. There's still a chance to see the Swedes play. Exactly. Easy as. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but loving that passion. But I think maybe just to touch on the studio and what you saw here, it's a first from us. I know we got some renders of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. They'll probably be thrown on screen. Um, I think for that, it was important for us to find a location that's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. We found London. We knew we wanted to go there. Don't laugh. <laughs> no, I was You're just thinking if, just if those weren't thrown on screen, what would have happened to those people behind the <laughs> in production there? I know. Wait, El Jefe is calling for sending like a death stare past the camera to the production no, people. No, no, no. You're a pro. You wouldn't have looked. I would have looked. Never, at them. never. Okay, no. okay. Right, but as all far jokes, as this is the render, aside. this is the studio. This is what we're looking at for yes. London. This is what we're looking at right now. It's obviously missing some cosmetic things like viewing screens for the audience, mm -hmm. some anti-cheat measures for teams. But I think most most exciting about it is that there's going to be fans. 
we want to try to take it up another level by making sure that fans can actually buy tickets for one specific game. You no longer need to buy a ticket for the duration of the day. You can break it up into that experience that you want. So if it's just one match, all fine by us, then come in and enjoy that and then leave again once that is concluded. From a uh, positioning place, I think you know we found London, excited about that. We knew that there's been plenty of events in London already, so we felt like we had to bring something new into it. So from a location perspective, we're excited to announce that it's going to be in the beautiful Three Mills film studio, which is uh, centrally positioned in London. Uh, it looks like an old brick town in London, but it is actually a massive studio facility. So you know, this is what you'll be seeing when you enter the studio as a fan, mm -hmm. but what lies beyond it before you enter is part of that experience too, right? So I think what you'll be meeting with there for, for those lucky ones that I hope will be joining us is, you know, walk through the studio, hear what's being shot and done at the exact time. When we went and saw the place uh, at a site visit, there was music videos in one hall, movies being filmed in the other. Danny Boyle has done a ton of his movies there, Wes Anderson, other big TV shows, Trust has been filmed there. So I think it's just an exciting place. And we wanted to find a place that, that creates additional uh, things to see and engage with other than just the tournament until you then sit in your seat and you're ready to take in some Counter-Strike. And then the other thing, exactly, taking in Counter-Strike, because this is the big change going up, is that you guys have rehauled the format. Yeah. And we've seen, we saw that with the graphic earlier, but if you could just touch on it just a little bit in terms of like, what, what are the big changes that are coming with Blast Pro Series next year? Sure, so think, uh, Biggest thing is, of course, the, the massive increase in best of three matches. We, we heard that loud and clear. We could see it ourselves as well. It's, it's really hard to build uh, strong storylines for a best of one tournament. That can get tricky, especially when you have no overtimes uh, in that format. So I think that was an important part to change. It's necessary for what we wanted to achieve in the beginning. But for what's to come next year, we wanted to change that, we wanted to break it into groups, make sure that the story arc of the entire tournament is less peak very big lull, right, peak, right, yeah. very big lull, um, where instead now we feel like we have a gradual build-up. There's prize money for each studio segment to entice the teams to get emotional about winning that studio leg. The, uh, the two best teams of each four-team group will advance to the spring final. Two others will drop down, six in total, to that showdown leg, which we see very much as that reverse funnel almost of where teams can come in will Tell more about that soon, what the mechanics are, sure, what the exactly. qualifiers could look like, etc. That's where, that's where the qualifiers come yes. in, where you could have your teams that, you know, granted the fans, they're maybe not happy that they don't see certain teams in the mix, but there's still an opportunity for those teams to actually qualify through and get into the main event. Definitely, definitely. And I think that that was one of the most important things that we had to do. Yeah. We needed to open it up and uh, not just for the big established teams that didn't make it into the pool of 12, but also for upcoming teams, right? You know, we saw a a wild Moscow event with, with the two qualifying teams actually making it to the final. We saw Giants and Movie Star Riders in Madrid, where mm -hmm. Giants made it through and actually played up against some of the big teams that we brought in, right? So all of that is exciting, but that needs to be built out even more so that there's several layers to how you can potentially make it in, right? That's what we want to try to achieve. So that's probably the most defining thing from a format perspective when, when looking at London and why we're excited about these groups, I mean, the way that the teams have seated themselves in this setup, I know you'll dive into that mm -hmm. after this is, uh, it's looking fair and intense. I think, <laughs> I think there's gonna be some strong groups. And the best part is, is that this is just one part of the year. We'll yeah. have a second half coming up as well. Yeah. Similar format going into the thick of things. And so this is how Blast is going to look for 2020. This is what we get to look forward to. Definitely. And we want to try to achieve a draw for the end of year as well. But as I'm sure all Counter-Strike fans are well aware, mm. there's a lot of movements in this space. There's a lot of events in this space. So I think we hope we can do a draw. If we can't, then we'll look into, to, of course, announcing that leg in other ways. It'll ultimately be scheduling that decides for us if we can do it uh, yes or no. So I'm hoping that we can do this because we've been wanting to do a draw-like setting for a while. So, Nicholas, that's that's the info that we wanted. That's everything we needed to know, at least for now. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more. Again, get on the Blast social media, follow there for news and updates and spicy memes. But, Nicholas, I'm going to have to bring in my wingman for tonight. Of course, of course. You're the jefe. you got all sorts no, of things no, no. to worry about. you got everything to get done. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring in Pimp and Pimp is going to be here for the group draw. So thank, thank you so much for laying everything out for us. Of tonight. course, small underdress kahuna <laughs> out. <laughs> You're the chief, man. You dress however you want. I'm the one who has to, you know, live up to your hype. All right, Pimp, it's been so long. 
It's been so long. <laughs> we were in Bahrain yesterday. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. We just saw each other a few days ago, yeah. and we were like, hey, man, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, we'll see you next year, and then sure here we are. Yeah. Copenhagen, I just couldn't stay away from the Danes. No, it's a lovely country, isn't it? No, no, it's fantastic, yeah. man. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's also a little bit warmer than Stockholm is right now, so. It's still cold. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Everybody's here walking around with the big jackets and everything. I'm like, dude, it was like minus three in Stockholm when I left. What are you guys doing? It's like cool. Positive seven, positive eight out here. Yeah. All right. We, nobody wants to know about the weather in Denmark. Nobody wants to know about the weather in Copenhagen. Everybody wants to know about how these groups are going to go down. And yeah. that's, that's what you and I are here to actually talk about. Because now we actually have a very interesting format as well uh, going into this draw. Is that the teams, the teams got to throw us for a little bit of a loop. This year did, right? We have we have a lot of good teams coming into this tournament. We have 12 teams, you know, mm -hmm. who all offer something differently coming into this one. We have a lot of the best teams in the world coming into the tournament. And then we had this whole seeding system, right? Yeah, Where the teams yeah. seeded themselves and put themselves up against each other, try to, you know, figure out which teams do actually think they are the best in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be very interesting. You have the 12 teams on your screen right here. And as you see, there's a lot of recognizable names. Oh, this is a competitive... We have the big ones, obviously, like Astralis, mm -hmm. like what you see them top right, right yeah. there. Hard to miss, but this is a competitive 12 teams. Sure. These are teams that are going deep into tournaments and that are getting work done. But that's the thing that I really wanted to touch on is mm. the fact that the teams seeded themselves, excluding themselves, right? But they decide, hey, the other 11 teams, this is what we think their order is. And based off of what each team said, that's how we seeded the teams. And so you're going to get some surprises. You're going to get some surprises in how this group draw goes down because maybe you think, hey, you know, I'm a fan and I think my team's the best in the world. Eh, you know, some teams, they don't necessarily think that. No, and that's the interesting thing, right? Because as you see in the screen right here, there's there's a few things that stands out to me, right? First off, MIBR, yeah. the fourth seeding <laughs> that's layer, the right? That's big one. Seeded at 10 by these teams, right? MIBR, they used to be the best team in the world. They have some of the most experienced players in the world. Nowadays, people don't really recognize them as being a good team. And I think it's it's justified, right? It's a team sure, that hasn't sure. been performing. It's a team that just made a roster change. So it's only fair that they're down there, but still to see them in the fourth seeding layer with teams like Complexity, OG Esports, which are relatively new brains within Counter-Strike, it's, it's not really a, a great sign for MIBR. I mean, for MIBR, especially considering the fact that you have major winners on that team to yeah. be saying, oh man, this is what the other teams think of us. Mm, bit of a knock on the confidence there. I mean, do, do any of the other team standings uh, shock you before we start getting into the seeding? Yeah, I feel Team Vitality being ranked seven here, or seeded seventh, is, mm -hmm. is not necessarily, you know, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's not fair, but it's interesting to me that you the do teams love to use some Zywo. Yeah, that's the thing, right? They have the best player in the world playing for that team <laughs> right now. There's no doubt about it, no discussion about it. The breakout <laughs> player of the year, and he's only seeded seventh. So that's interesting. A team like Face Clan, we haven't really seen much from them. Navi as well, it's, it's a team that's been a little bit up and down. Some rusted changes have been going into that one as well. Still, the other teams feel that they are stronger teams and, and stronger brands of Counter-Strike than Vitality. To me, that's a bit surprising, but we'll have to see. And you think the Australians, 100 Thieves, they're well placed right now, up there, fourth, fifth seed, Navi, you would agree with everything else that we see before we start getting into the draw? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I would potentially, you know, Vitality, Navi, and Face Clan. Those three are, are very close in comparison, so you could, you know, rearrange that if you really wanted to. But sure. but overall, I think it's fair. You know, we have Astralis, Team Liquid, and Evil Geniuses being the top three seats, and I think there's no doubt about that. No discussion about that. The best team in the world yeah. being Astralis, the second best Liquid. We saw that in the finals at Bahrain as well, and then Evil Geniuses, who's had a breakout season. So that's only fair. Yeah, I'm glad that you've come around on that, you know, admitting yourself that Astralis are the best. Well, they are the best. <laughs> <laughs> but the way that this is going to go down, because it is the holiday season after mm. all, you know, it is Christmas, uh, we've, uh, we've gone ahead and uh, gotten an assortment of uh, balls around together. And uh, so you have the different you have the different tiers, yeah. and how it's going to work out is essentially we're going to be drawing from each one of these bowls that contain balls. And uh, the fourth one here are the fourth seeded teams, third seeded, second seeded, and first seeded. And so we have three groups four teams to a group, mm. and eventually we're going to run out of balls. So yeah. it's, rough, do like the it's, balls it's a real tragedy. Yeah. It's a real tragedy, but you know sometimes that's just the way life goes. So, Pimp, do you want to <laughs> <laughs> start things off? Should we pick the first ball? Yeah, yeah, I think. Also, because we've been warned that these things really do blow up, and it, you know this is Scandinavia, health hazards and all that. They really do worry. Uh, we actually have to contain the balls. <laughs> we're going to have so much fun with this. <laughs> so let's see who the first team is. You ready for it? You ready for it? Mm. <laughs> 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 All right, let's try and give it two hands, you know. There, there we go. go. Got to there we go. Right. It. I'm not looking, and you guys saw there was no shenanigans. Hmm. One ball went in, <laughs> and no balls come out. <laughs> let's see what the first team is going to be. 
I swear I've got the sense of humor of a 10 year old. All right. So the first team is going to be MIBR, right? The team that we. Wow, okay. No, uh, no wasting time. Definitely didn't expect to be down there. Let's uh, see if we can put them up in our group. All right, so MIBR. Mm -hmm. MIBR in group one. There we go. Perfect. All right, so that's easy peasy. That's going to that be a, a tough group from the get go, right? MIBR, you, you must consider them to be the strongest team down there. Damn straight, we yeah. do. I mean, they've got they've got major winners. They got That's a lot what of I'm experience. Thinking. Yeah, a lot of experience. Major winners. They got, got, got Taco. Got a new player as well. You know, yeah. a new player that nobody really heard of. You know, coming into this year, it's uh, mm -hmm. an Argentinian guy. So the fact that he's uh, he's part of this is, is very interesting. All right, so pimp. We both agreed that I was. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to break some balls? I can't even get the joke out. <laughs> But we both agreed that I was the only one that gets to play with balls up here. Sure. So <laughs> so I get turn. to play with the balls as well. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dad. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't work out, did it? <laughs> Come on, Tim. There we go. That's a tough ball, you know. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Mm -hmm. We got complexity. Okay. Yeah. Interesting team, right? Jason Lake, whole lot of here. I mean, this is a team, obviously different logo now, right? You guys, I mean, you've noticed a little bit of a blue star going on. But uh, it is a storied team in Counter-Strike. It's been around forever. I mean, one of the greats, one of the best. And as far as uh, red ties are concerned, the man sure. knows how to pick them. But uh, as far as Counter-Strike recently, I mean, if complexity, it feels like it's been a struggle for quite some time. Yeah, they have been investing a lot into this Counter-Strike project. It hasn't really paid off just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been bringing in some, some interesting names, uh, Config, one of them, right? A guy that uh, has a lot of potential. He has a big mouth and also big balls on the server sometimes. So it's uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what they can do uh, in, at such a strong tournament like this. Yeah. You know? I, I still don't expect too much, but let's see about it. This is what I really love. You, know, you want to like break some balls? Yeah, I want to break some balls. Yeah. I'm good at it. But like the <laughs> what I love is <laughs> you know, when they're coming into it, they're just thinking, man, it's going to be such a great idea. We're going to put all these balls on there, and it's going to be such a good idea. And then obviously, we're just going to make ball jokes the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> all right, hit it. So I think we should know who this is, but just for good oh, yeah. manners. So we need to show it. OG. We got OG. There we go. Perfect. Another team, right, that has been investing into Counter-Strike. Another team that's going to be very interesting to follow and a team that I would say are the heavy underdogs coming into such a strong tournament like this. Well, this is one of the things. I mean, they have actually just been, I mean, granted, it's it's not exactly a tier one tournament, mm. but they have been competing. They have been doing at least a little bit of work. Yeah. I mean, are they living up to the hype going into this, or did we expect anything at all going into this? I think my expectations were relatively low. Uh, mm. I think they've been surprising so far. We saw them at Summit play some some decent counter strikes. So hopefully they'll have time to get ready for this one for next year. And and I think they could be a, a, a great underdog. I think they're a dangerous team, and I think they have a lot of potential. Question is, is it going to be too soon yet against these big boys? Well, what I'm what I'm thinking is that whatever Nathan touches, he's got like the hand of Midas. Sure. Whatever Nathan touches, NBK that is, uh, it turns to gold. I mean, yeah. he's he's just created all the rosters it feels like that have led to championship teams championships trophies for the french oh but of course okay. i want to make sure one thing that we do need to do is we do need to actually mix the balls as well just so you guys think i mean there <laughs> there is absolutely no shenanigans here but uh pimp just you dive pick right in no i've right in no <laughs> go ahead and grab me one there we go <laughs> so because i mean obviously we're trying to make it as clear as possible, ladies, mm. ladies and gents, that's uh, no shenanigans here. Worth to mention, we're at the third seating layer now. Uh, yes, we are at the third seating layer. Mm. Pimp and I did not put any of the notes into the balls either, so we have no way to know what's going on here. But uh, <laughs> we're just going to be, you know, breaking up. Oh, wait, uh, Pimp, I think it's your turn, isn't it? Yeah, my turn's yeah. breaking. All right, Let's Pimp, go ahead. Out. Nope, no. definitely not. There we go. There we go. Got to hit the right angle. Yeah, you, know. you know, that's the thing. You know what it is? Mm. For all of you haters out there, the, it's 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 bouncing off of this little spring here. So if you do, if you don't put it in at an angle and you hit it, there just, we go. Just you know, just leaves you wanting more. We got NIP, and you know who they're gonna join? NIP. Yeah. Into group one, MIBR get to play against some Swedes. And as you said, you know that's a, a very interesting matchup because you said it before. MIBR they have major winners. 
Exactly. So has an IP. So does an IP. Mm. For now. For now. Just but a single one. <laughs> just a single one, one left. One left. You know, they're they're a dying breed on that team. Sure. <laughs> it's a, it's a very interesting team, right? Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of rumors circulating around them. You know, are they gonna stick together? Are they are they gonna get better? You know, we've seen positive signs coming out of the Swedish Counter Strike scene. So I wouldn't necessarily be too sure if I'm MIBR that that's gonna be a walkover, but. It's definitely a tough matchup. I don't think any team right now, MIBR, can take any team as a walkover. No, that's, that's the problem. I mean, that's the problem. Yeah. Right? That's the issue with MIBR right now and how far the, you know, the greats have fallen, mm. in a sense. Because, I mean, they're, they're a team that should not be ever considered low tier or, let's say, lower seed. Well, that's been the reality the past 12 months, right? They, they, they had a good amount of time where you, you believed they could come back. You know, you, you gave them the, the credit that they once were a good team. But nowadays, you know, it wasn't really the team to be. You want a sip of this? Yeah. There you go. Let's see. Oh, it actually disappeared down here somewhere. There is actually no piece of paper in this ball. No. Doesn't seem like. Don't it. cut oh, yourself. There we go. We Don't cut it. yourself. Yeah. Ah. This isn't America, but I mean, you know, you're mm. not gonna make money off of it. But sure. Just to avoid messing this place. There up. we go. We got the surprise from the third team. Hey, there there we go. Vitality. Vitality's yeah. in there. All right, all right, all right. Vitality are in the mix. I mean, you are, you, you know, it's like you were making fun of Maniac for being such a Forest fanboy, but yeah. you really are a Zywoo fanboy. Like, you just love Zywoo. I'm a fan of, uh, of high-quality Counter-Strike, let me right, put it that enough, way. Fair enough. And, and I think right now, you know, you can consider him to be, there can be a discussion, there can be a conversation whether he's the best player in the world, Symbol may be up there, Device as well, but I think, you know, in, in terms of pure raw skill and, and how much of an impact he's having on a team right now, I think Saibu is definitely up there to be considered the best player in the world. Without him, that team wouldn't be as good as they are. There I can agree. And and that's, you know, that's the, the value I think Saibu has for Vitality. Also, considering this group, they're going up against a team like Complexity, it's, it, it should be a, a, a walkover for the best player in the world, but yeah. I mean, I think that Zywoo farms Complexity. Yeah. Now, whoever else winds up in that group, which we're going to find out. We still have the second seeds and the first seeds to go through here. So we're not even through all the groups yet. Just this is the final third seed for the third group. So we're about to find out who it is. That's Drum roll. G2. G2. So G2. Woo! That's good. <laughs> French Counter-Strike, right? French Counter-Strike, man. That's it. NBK, he's going to be going up against the Frenchies in G2. And you know what? I was just about to say that that's going to be a very interesting matchup because he knows these guys, right? They've been playing with and against each other for a long, long time. So there's definitely some grudge as well to be held from, yeah. uh, from NBK. He's, uh, he's been excluded from the French scene. Nobody apparently want to play with him anymore. So now no. he went international. And, and as you said, you know, whatever he touches seems to always go the right way. He knows, he knows how to make championship teams. Sure does. And that's the thing. I mean, Vitality, G2, he dodged Vitality. That would have been the spiciest of spicy. That would have been the tip top. That would have been sick. But uh, we got G2 still. We got a little bit of history there. It can still be something. But, uh, you know, Magic Ball's here. We're just going to give him a little toss, a little tumble. Yeah. And you can see it can be tough to handle three balls at one time. We're good to go. Don't want to break it by dropping it in there. Got to be careful. There you go. <sighs> I believe right. it's your turn. It's my turn? Yeah. Right. I like how you're sticking to this. You could be hogging all the balls, but <laughs> I, I could share and I could. Well, let's get into it. Where are we at? First team. Second seed now. We're into the second seed tier. Yeah, we're starting to, to look at some of the big teams this time around. It's going to be FaZe Clan. FaZe, okay, okay. So FaZe in the group one, that's with NIP. And they've had a bit of a history recently, a couple of events now. It's been getting a bit spicy between the two of those. And then MIBR in the first group as well, joining FaZe. Yeah, I, I believe this group run is, is shaping up to be a, a very interesting one because there's a lot of unknowns coming into this one. We know that FaZe Clan, we saw that at the Copenhagen Finals, right? They can play some solid Counter-Strike, explosive Counter-Strike, oh, maybe yeah. some of the best Counter-Strike in the world. But we also saw in Bahrain that they didn't really deliver uh, at all, you know? So it's a bit of an unknown, and I think going up against NIP, going up against MIBR, we, we may have some close games in there. They had a rough one. They had a rough one this uh, this weekend yeah. in Bahrain for sure. But I mean, you gotta. I do appreciate the fact that they are willing to take a little bit of risk, right? Bringing in like talent like Brokey. Sure. I mean, and he seems to be panning out. He had his moments in Bahrain as mm. well. So I mean, the team is not to be taken lightly. But they're definitely in a position where perhaps the vacation could be a very good thing for them. The break could be a very good thing for them. Call calm down. Take a week. Yeah, and, and then figure out a game plan for, for and 2020. Get, and right? then get the game plan there's going. no doubt that the talent within that lineup, you know, having Nico, having Olaf Meister, having Rain, some of the best players in the world. So, of course, they can be good. You know, of course, they can be a well-playing team. They just need to figure it out. Got all, they got major champions on that team. Yeah. Come on, those guys know how to win. Unlike Pimp. Yeah, there well, we go. We got it. Don't <laughs> worry about it. <laughs> see what the second team, group two, is going to be. 
Don't worry, we'll come up with more jokes. We're not done yet. It's gonna be Navi. So, Navi, second team out of the uh, second seed. And so far, all right, so this is actually shaping up very nicely here. Because as far as Navi are concerned, I mean, Vitality, a team they can beat. Complexity, definitely a team they can beat. Now we just have to see who's going to be the uh, the dark horse that's going to run into their group and screw their day up. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough group already, right? And, and we kind of highlighted it before, conversation in terms of who's the best player in the world. Well, we get the straight up duel now. We get Simple going up against Cyborg, <laughs> Navi against Vitality. So let's see who's going to come out, you know, and, and start off the year strong, right? I think that's, uh, that's going to be a storyline that's going to be interesting to follow because they are two of the best players in the world, without a doubt. You were there, man. I was watching Simple the Undertaker all week. Yeah. Long. All right, man. I was going through <laughs> My the favorite smoke, movie, you know. Smoke Criminal, Simple the, Under the Undertaker, one, two, three, mm. and four. Four in particular. Uh, I can't remember. Is it my turn or is it your turn? I think it's your turn. <coughs> it's my turn. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Thanks for sharing. Mm. Boom. In one. Go. <coughs> Pimp. Yes. There we go. The last team is going to be 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves from the second seed group. So that's yeah. the last second seed group, 100 Thieves. And I could imagine a lot of fans out there would, you know, question themselves, why do they find themselves in the second seeding layer? But they've been playing some solid Counter-Strike as of late. It's not the most skilled team we have out there. It's not the best players necessarily. Of course, they have star potential. JKS is one of them. But in terms of raw skill, I believe they, they may be one of the weakest teams in the entire tournament. But team play-wise, you know, synergy-wise, and, and the way they play Counter-Strike right now, they definitely deserve to be up there. It's a, a team that I wouldn't necessarily like to play if I'm a face clan, NIP yeah. for that matter. Any of those teams who rely a lot on the individuals. Because I do feel that the 100 Thieves, they're playing some, some solid counters, right? I like to, to refer to them as, as mini Astralis, basically Astralis without the skill. And it's worth mentioning again, just to, just to reiterate, it's the teams. This is the different format here. Mm. It's the teams that determined the seeding for the group. We're not going off of HLTV. God forbid we're going off of ESL. No, <laughs> it's the teams that settled it. It's the teams that decided. So the teams right now are thinking that 100 Thieves are playing some good CS, that they are a team that's worthy of being up there in the second tier. And they sure got the results to back it up. We saw them at the major going all the way to the semifinal. We've seen them at plenty of tournaments just playing some, some solid counter strike. So I definitely agree with you. It's a team you have to look out for. Yeah, and just really happy to see the progression of this team. They've been at it for a long time. I mean, the core of this roster, as a, you know, I mean, like JK asked, they've been at it for a while. So for them to start getting up there into the higher echelon, I'm all for it. Pimp, do the honors. We're in the first seeding layer now. Do you think I could do in one? I think so. This is where we really get excited. Yeah, we Things go. are going to pop. And let's find out who's our first tier one team. It's going to be Team Liquid. All right. Liquid in the mix. And, well, Liquid are, I mean, kicking things off already. Liquid are going to be very happy that they're not running into Astralis. So, be. not in the same group. <laughs> That's a good start for Liquid, and that's they are going to be in group one. That's a very interesting group, bro, right? You have Liquid, Face Clan, NIP, and MIBR. You have some of the, you have some of the best players in the world going toe to toe, basically, right? Liquid being potentially the most skilled team in the world, taking on Face Clan, who's supposed to be the most skilled team in the world, uh -huh. just not cutting it right now. Then you add some uh, major winners from MIBI in there, and a Forest in, in NIP, right? There's a lot of, a lot of skilled players in that group. There's a lot of major winners in that group. There's a lot of major winners. <laughs> There's a lot of major winners in that group. Actually, that might be the major group. We can just yeah. put it that way. Simple as. Because, uh, well, simple's in Group B. So we're about to find out who the uh, second Tier 1 team is going to be with Navi in Group B. Or Group 2. Group 2. And, and so far, it's been it's been like the, the group of death, I feel. You know, that's been the rough one, especially if uh, Astralis pops off here. See who's going to be, though. Ooh, the suspense. Oh, we got Astralis. <laughs> all right, all right. So you got the best team in the world. They're going to be going up. Navi have got their work cut out for them. Yeah, I feel like this, this you know, theme of, Man. of group two, that's going to be the best player in the world. Saivu symbol going up against the best team in the world. That's oh, a rough one. You're going to have Device. You're going to have Dupree. You're going to have Simple. You're going to have, I mean, just in terms of sheer raw, pure fragging power, yeah. Group 2 is going to be bonkers. But then you have complexity, right? A team that we don't really know much about, a team that has been investing a lot into Counter-Strike. They have a guy called Config. Mm. He used to be, uh, 
one of the most fun players to watch, you know, back in the days, a, a year or two ago, he was one of the most explosive Counter-Strike players we had within the scene. Always yeah. good for a, yeah. a fun comment as well, you know, but he's going to have his uh, his job cut out for him. You read that uh, that Thorn article, right? I did. That was a fantastic article. Yeah. I think he nailed it. Mm. And, and, and Config himself came back and said, hey, sure, can't disagree. And so that is that is kind of the, 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 the tragedy of Config or the, the story of Config. And now we're all waiting to see the, the redemption story. Yeah, and he'll have to, to reinvent himself with complexity, right? It's a, a project that's been building up for some time. They've as said, been investing a lot of money into this project. You know, they have some great training facilities in, in the States and in Dallas. So there's a lot of stuff going well for complexity. This group, though, is going to be incredible tough for them to, to survive. It's some of the, the best players in the world, you know, the best team in the world as well. So we'll have to see Complexity play some of the best Counter-Strike we've ever seen that brand of Counter-Strike play if they want to stand a chance. Indeed. And, well, again, I'd like to reiterate that, the redemption story for Config. Mm. I mean, if ever you're going to make a note, if, if ever you're going to make a point be to the, the world, yeah. that's the group. You start the year, and you come in, and you, you take go up against the best, against the best the of the best. You take down Simple, you take down Saibu, and then you finish it off with taking down Astralis. I yeah, think you made go. occasion. The man is back. Yeah. The man is back. Just like. Want to break the last ball? I'll break the last ball. Mm. All right, let's get into it. There we go. Love it. Love breaking balls, pimp. All right, that's yours. Let's see what we got for the last team. It's going to be evil geniuses. There it is. That logo truly is evil. It's Not a new bad. one. It is the new one. So they're rounding it up with 100 Thieves. G2 Esports and OG Esports. I feel that's a group, you know, with a lot of upset potential. Uh, mm. I feel if you were to to rank them and, and say which are the strongest, you know, that probably would be the, the SA easiest group to go through because we don't really know too much about OG Esports. We don't really know too much about G2. You know, the 100 Thieves, it's a, it's a great team, but, but in terms of individual skill, they can definitely be talked to. So I think Evil Geniuses with uh, their raw fracking potential are, are quite happy for this group. Yes, they, I mean, they have been looking so good throughout Turkey, where they hoisted the trophy, and mm. then 100 Thieves, G2 Esports. OG, you look at this and you're thinking, this is definitely a group where evil geniuses can farm, and then they can get out, they can progress, sure. and make it into the higher bracket. I'd, I, all right, so that's what I was going to get into now, which is you're looking at this, and I think based on our evaluation so far, mm. people can probably guess which we think is going to be the spiciest group. Sure. But uh, which one do you think it is? I think Group 2 has a lot of potential, right? Obviously, yeah. you have the best team in the world, you have two of the best players in the world, and then you add in Complexity, who is a lineup we, we roughly don't know much <laughs> about, right? Coming into 2020, it could be that they found themselves, it could be that they, they found a new level of Counter-Strike to display for the world, but just by looking at those teams and, and the players within those teams, I'd say Group 2 is going to be interesting. Group 1 as well, right? You have Team Liquid in there, they, they had a rough... They had a rough year, right? They were the best team in the world, without a doubt, for a certain period. You know, even Astralis couldn't touch them, and then they kind of fell off after a little <coughs> bit of a break. Now they have another break, and let's see how they're going to come out of that one. If, if it's the same case that we saw at the Major, then I see, you know, Face Clan, NIP, and MIBI definitely have a, a shot at taking down Team Liquid. Yeah, it's going to be so close. This is exactly what we were all hoping for, an excellent group spread, really. Each mm. group has its story, each group has its potential, and then we get a monster group in group two as well where things can really pop off. But again, formats is set up so that teams can still qualify. If they don't make it out top two in these groups, sure. they still have a way to make it into the finals. And so even if your team, your favorite team, right, doesn't make it, and even if your favorite team doesn't happen to be one of these teams, there are qualifiers set up as well to allow those teams to have a chance to get into the main event as well. So. I think that's going to be it for us here, man. I think that's going to be uh, us wrapping it up. But one yeah. thing before we go is we have to remind you, we talked about a new format. We so we've seeded the groups. We've set it all up. Now it's your turn. You can get your tickets starting tomorrow, 11 GMT, on the website. Be sure to check out the social. And we're going to get that website here. Yep, blastpremiere.com. Visit the website tomorrow evening, and the tickets will be on sale. And you can be the, one of the first into the studio for the new Blast premiere series, the new Blast experience. So that's all going down tomorrow. It's the sales are going on tomorrow. The league starts next year. And you can clearly tell that Pimp and I, we're looking forward to the holidays. And I'm sure all of you are as well. So Merry Christmas, everybody. And we'll see you next year.